Bahamian conch catch and cook where we turn this into this into this. First, we have to catch our conch. I'm pointing my camera at the ocean floor right now, and do you see what I see? At the center of the screen, that's where our conch is resting. They camouflage into the sand pretty well, but let's dive down and take a closer look. Yep, this one's definitely alive. You can see it resting in the shell. Let's bring this back up to the surface to see if it's worth taking. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. This conch has stunning colors on the inside of the shell. It is also legal to harvest because of the well-formed flaring lip. You can see that I'm trying to demonstrate how long that lip is. Conchs reach sexual maturity at three to five years. They are deemed safe to harvest once the conch has a fully formed flaring lip. At that point, it will no longer keep growing in length. Rather, the lip will just continue to get thicker. That is indicative of a conch's age. Conch cannot be harvested during the summer months as that is when the species is most active in reproduction. Additionally, it is illegal to catch conch with the assistance of scuba gear. Lastly, this is a very over-harvested species. Take only what you need and make sure it's within regulations. Oh look, a stingray! Now that we've caught our conch, I'm going to work at getting the meat out of the shell. First, I want to be sure to wash them off. I have two conch with me because that makes getting the meat out of the shells easier. I'm going to start with taking one shell and hitting it against the other shell to create a hole. I would say that I am a novice at this task. I've done it twice before. The skill is not there, but I do have determination. I honestly enjoy this task because I feel like a cave woman. Once you have a hole, you can put a knife in there and it will loosen the meat for you to grab it out. The placement of the hole really matters in how easy this process will be for you. I'm not going to lie, I was successful, but I definitely did struggle a bit. Usually there is one hole, but for me, there were many. All that really matters is that I got the meat out. I had better luck with one of the other conchs, and here I'm pulling out the meat. The area that is hanging and thin is part of its digestive gland. We're going to go ahead and cut off that. We don't want to be eating it, but there's quite beautiful colors, and you can tell that this conch is a male. It has a verge, which is its sexual organ. This conch was pretty long in comparison to me, and the other conch got a bit mangled when I was taking it out, but from the digestive glands, so I did not care too much. The main part that we will be harvesting is underneath the foot, which I am holding these conch from. This mollusk is so slimy, it's a lot of fun feeling that texture on your skin, but your hands throughout this process are going to get very dirty, so make sure you have paper towels and a sink close by. And here I am with the shells before I get to cutting up the meat. Ah, they are so pretty! I am skinning the muscle part of the conch. I cut off the foot right over there. Basically, any of the dark skin or different colors you want to remove, we are looking to have a chunk of white meat at the end of this. Sometimes it is easier to use the knife to take the skin off and sometimes it's better to pull with your hands. Regardless, it is a tedious process. I tried my best to save as much of the meat as I could, but you can tell that with these large conchs there was a significant amount from their digestive tract. But the nutrients are not going to waste, and I will return them to the ocean. Once you're done preparing the meat, you will have fillets that look like this, almost like chicken. You want to pound on the meat to tenderize it. The meat can get pretty tough, especially if it is sitting in the fridge for any amount of time. I switched to trying a knife. I could not find a tenderizer, so I'm using whatever is around me. 
Now I will cut the conch into small pieces. This will allow for a shorter cook time and allow for it to mix nicely with my other ingredients. The dish that I'm going for today is a ceviche inspired dish. Here's a close up of the meat. It looks so delicious, pure white. Oh my God, yum. The ingredients that I'll be using for this dish are tomato, avocado, lemon, and lime. It is very simple produce, but here on the island, there are no super center grocery stores and you have a limited variety of what you can choose from. But I did get so incredibly lucky to choose an avocado that was just perfectly ripe. You know, it's not too hard, not too soft, not brown at all. I am cutting the avocado into small pieces to put in the bowl with my tomatoes. Before I cook the meat, I am prepping my lemon and lime. I'm a big fan of using these ingredients to accompany seafood dishes. Let's put this to the side now and get to cooking the meat. I am sauteing this meat, adding in a little bit of salt and mixing it around in the pan. I started to notice that things were getting a little dry, so I topped it off with a drizzle of olive oil. This will also help crisp in the outer layer. I am applying a generous amount of pepper to enhance the flavor. Continue to stir around the meat to spread the salt, pepper, and oil and ensure for even cooking. Place a lid on the pan to trap some of that steam and stay close by as the meat will continue to cook. The conch pieces started to turn just a little bit golden and after another stir or two, I could tell that it was ready to be served. I'm placing the meat on top of my avocado and tomato mixture. Make sure your lime and lemon are close by so you can decorate the plate. It is definitely a work of art. After all of that hard work, you can now sit down and enjoy this delicious ceviche inspired conch dish. Thank you so much for watching this catch and cook. I hope it inspires you to ethically source your own food. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Bye!